What's up guys, Shane here for 3D Printing, and today, oh, I'm 3D printing a giant Lego go-kart. Welcome back guys, and as you see, I have a giant 3D printed Lego go-kart in front of me. So this is the 1972 or 71 go-kart that was released by Lego, obviously many, many years ago. So this is a project I found on Thingiverse, and I think the fellow was German or something, uh, maybe Brit, I don't remember, he was from somewhere in Europe, from what I recall. But uh, it is a amazing project, and I, I just think it's, it's awesome what he did. So what he ended up doing was, is you can actually find almost all of these Lego parts already on Thingiverse. If you just search for a two by three, a one by three, the, the different model numbers, or you actually find the CAD for them, convert them in, you know, uh, you know, maybe Fusion 360 or something like that, convert it to an STL, and then print out that part. But a little more about this. So this is 500% of the original model. Sadly, I don't have the original model because uh, it would be great to scale, but the originator of this thing did have it, and I can show you a picture of what it looks like with that itty bitty model, which fits basically right on the seat. So let me tell you all about the different things to this. Now this required quite a lot of filament. So I would say this took me about 60 to $70 to actually print after buying all the filament. It took, oh, I'd say about six to seven rolls of filament in order to get it. I did have some mess ups. Uh, I, I don't print ABS very often, so I had to learn a little bit of that. Flexible filament, I had to go through three brands to actually find a decent brand that I liked and I had bought all those rolls. And I used a little bit of review filament in here, so I used some Catalyst PLA in here. I used a little bit of Ziltec PLA in here. Actually, well, Ziltec I bought myself. So yeah, I had like a few Catalyst parts. And this right here is some Shun PLA that I had some of these light gray parts because I ran out of ABS because again, I was printing so much with it and I ended up using it all up. All the ABS for the gray parts was from Folger Tech. All of the, most of the blue parts was Folger Tech PLA. The black wheels, so these are pretty awesome. I'll pull one off here to show you a little better. So the wheels are completely rubber, which is great. Uh, they were a 20% infill, four, three perimeters, five top, five bottom. So they're really sturdy. I actually put real weight on these and it would work out well. And this is with 3D Solutech uh, flexible filament. This stuff printed amazingly. And this kind of crappy looking uh, flexible print here was Maker Geek's Flexible filament, the Maker Flex, which printed like garbage. Now, I did only try doing this print on two printers, and I had this problem. And this is actually the end result that I got on the Forgetech FT5. But the 3D Solutech prints, I also printed the exact same settings, but using the 3D Solutech filament, and they all came out perfect. I mean, there were hardly any issues at all with it. And just to show you, this is how much filament I have left out of the one kilogram roll. There is nowhere near enough to do a one more wheel. You need eight of these wheels to print. So I used a full kilogram roll. So these are what, $20? So I needed $20 just to print the wheels on this thing. So quite expensive for that. Another reason why I use the Forger Tech ABS and PLA is because of its cost. It's only about 12 or $13 a roll. And uh, I also have the discount code for 5% off on their store, which I can show you guys below. And if you want to purchase some of it, that, that's probably the best way to do it. I also used a little bit of Ziltec because I have a 15% coupon for their filament, which takes that down to $11 a roll, which is probably the best deal that you can get for quality filament. I mean, $11 a roll, you really can't beat that. And again, I'll put a link and the coupon code for that down below if you guys want to check that out. And then the red PLA in here was a mix of some filament that I had and some review filament. Most of it is Catalyst PLA. And then one of the other parts was another PLA. I don't remember which one it was. I think it was the Digistrut PLA that I had. I needed one part because I had battered laser, layer adhesion on one of them and they came apart. But you know, everything is printed you know, all these red parts are PLA. All right, and a couple other stats on it. All of the PLA and ABS parts are printed with three perimeters, four top, four bottom, and a 25% honeycomb infill, all using Simplify 3D. In total, oh, I would have to say probably three or 400 hours of printing to print all of this. Now, why? Because I had to take my time and I had some issues with some of the ABS warping on me, even inside my enclosure. Again, I'm not the best at printing ABS, but I am learning. This really helped me learn a lot of how to print with ABS. 
in the enclosure and my temperatures and things like that. So I learned a lot you doing this project with that. But I end up having to reprint certain things a few times and I end up having to just print things by themselves just to be safe. So if it's screwed up, it only screwed up one part. So like the steering wheel here, you see it works just fine. Uh, the steering wheel is ABS. I had to print this, it's uh, two parts. So you can either print it one at a time on a small four vector printer or just print both halves down on the FT5 because it's big enough. And uh, like the lighter gray parts here are PLA and they were what I was most recently printed. And they, didn't, they don't require to have so much uh, rigidity to them. I guess this gear kind of does, but it works out very well just the way it is. So I also, so between using PLA, ABS and some PETG, I'd use PETG for some of the uh, axles here just because I ran out of black filament and I didn't have any more ABS at the time. The tolerances are not the best, and the, most everything was printed on the FT5, but with how ABS shrinks and PLA doesn't, PLA is a nice easy fit, the PETG is an easy fit because it doesn't shrink or move at all, at much at all, but the ABS part's super duper tight, so some of the tolerances are off because of that, and again, because I printed on multiple printers. Oh, and one last thing, all of these were printed at a 0.28 millimeter layer height just to save on time, even at that, it still took a few hundred hours. If I would have put on my Volcano hot end on the FT5, I could have printed at a 0.4 or 0.6 millimeter layer height, but I didn't want to keep swapping it back and forth because I've been printing this for about two months and I've been doing reviews since then and other projects in between doing these prints. So I didn't want to keep swapping back and forth at the time, but if I went back to redo this, I would just swap that out and just dedicate the FT5 to just printing out parts for this. So these black parts here, so the main drive shaft we'll call it, and then the support part, ugh, the support shaft that goes across the entire middle of the cart that kind of gives a little bit of its rigidity is hollow and it's PLA and it's threaded. And it actually is made for an M5 300 millimeter ra uh, threaded rod. Well, just so happens that I upgraded my Fogitech 2020i3 to lead screws. And it came with 300 millimeter M5 threaded rods. So you know what? That's what I used. And these actually just twist together. It takes about 20 minutes, I would say, to actually twist both all the way down. I ended up just watching TV while doing it for a while. And my wrists were killing me at the end of that. Again, after 20 minutes of doing that, it was just rough. So I just realized the air conditioner was on. So that audio might not be the best. I apologize. Continuing on. So those, again, those took a while to get actually threaded on there, but they are super duper strong because they have a metal reinforcement. Now, not all of these have that. If they did, that would probably be pretty cool, but you'd have to be cutting down a lot of rods and you'd have to cut all of these in half when you print them and then add in the threading, but this already has it in there, so it works out well. But again, at 500%, all these parts take a while. Like you could do almost the entire red seat on one go, but being that it is 500%, you can only print this on a 300 by 300 millimeter bed at a minimum. You have to have a minimum 300 by 300 millimeter bed. Well, I guess take it back. If you have a 250 by 300, it would work out. But other than that, no, because you have to fit it on the diagonal. None of these fit straight on a 300 millimeter bed because they all rate about 310 to 340, I'd say. So end to end, corner to corner on the FT5 works out well. And that's how why all those print. And again, 500% is pretty huge when you compare to the regular standard 100% models. So why did I print this? I don't really know. I, I saw it, it was super cool, and I got started printing it, and again, it just took about two, two and a half months to get it all printed, and it's pretty boss. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it, if I'm gonna give it away to someone here, or if I'm going to keep it. If I end up keeping it, I might make it so that the parts don't come apart or I will redo a lot of these parts in like materials just because of the tight tolerance. I will reprint all of these uh, actual black bars, the rods all in ABS so that they shrink properly and then I get a proper fit between the other ABS parts. I, again, I had to hammer some of these on just to get them to stay on and in having to redo that, I would have to hammer these off and possibly break them. I don't want to sink another $60 into this uh, model because I don't know if this video is going to make that much, which uh, is not the point of the video, but it, it kind of helps out, which is kind of why I do the 3D printing thing is to kind of make a project this worthwhile. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But if you guys want to check this model out, I've already posted pictures of it throughout the video. I will make sure there's a link down below. Please go check out his model. It is an amazing feat. But again, there is also different repositories online that you can just search the actual exact part number, the Lego part number, the what, five or six digit number. You can search that, 
find the actual CAD model, mo uh, pull that into Fusion 360, and then go ahead and export it as an STL after you clean it up or change it up or whatever it is that you need to do, and it works out well. One thing I will say, if you do download these parts, it's gonna ask you if you wanna convert them, say no always, and they will import them at their standard 100% size. If you convert them, you have no idea what the percentage is gonna be that it, in, that it actually imports it as, because it ends up blowing it way up. Don't do that, just hit no. It imports it in millimeters, it makes it nice and tiny. Then you can blow it up as big as you want. So again, you can see how big it is compared to me. I would probably to say, it weighs a good 25, 30-ish pounds. I don't actually have a scale that I could put this on. I guess my regular bathroom scale might work. But yeah, I would say it's at least 30 pounds. I mean, I've gotta use some oomph to hold this thing up. But yeah, I mean, like I said, the gears work here, so it turns very well uh, with the not so uh, fitting parts. It's a little loose though. So if it was a little tighter, my son could probably actually sit on this. And the bottom plate, whoa. Another reason why it has to be 300 by 300 millimeter is the bottom plate is an eight by eight and it is one solid piece. It takes up nearly the entire print bed. And I'm not sure if I have a time lapse for it, but it takes up almost the entire FT5 print bed. Or if you have a CR10, again, it would take up the entire print bed practically just to print this one undercarriage piece. And then all of the longer pieces that are here, you have to print diagonally in order to get them to actually come out on any of those printers. The rods all can be printed vertically and I printed them all at once on the CR10 and it worked out really well. So yeah, there is a 500% scale Lego model go-kart from the 1970s. I don't know why I printed it. Pretty much for learning was great. I learned a lot on how to print with ABS more. The 3D Solutech flexible film, amazing stuff. So please check that out down in the video description if you want to pick some up. I literally didn't have to do any calibration. Set it 220 degrees, 30 millimeters a second on the FT5 with the Titan V6 combo. Hit print and it went down beautifully. No issues at all. So I can absolutely highly recommend that. Maker Flex from Makers Geek, not so much. Did not have very much success with that. So it was a fun project. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. I would love to hear from you down in the comment section where you thought this was a cool project, whether you guys are going to do it. I would love to also see some of that. So if you're going to post this on Instagram or anything like that, down below there's links to all my different social profiles. Make sure you link me on whatever it is that you're printing and uh, on Instagram, Facebook, anything like that. I would love to see what you guys do. So if you guys want to see more awesome content like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon. That way you can email notification anytime I upload cool projects like this. And if you guys want to support me, down below me is going to be a Patreon link. Don't even a dollar more. I appreciate it. The money that I've gotten from Patreon, some of that went into this in order to help me buy some of that filament. Even if you donate me just a dollar, it goes a long way. And I thank all my current Patreons for what you do to help me. If you want to donate to me directly, but don't want to do it on like a monthly basis, just buy me a coffee and a Streamlabs link down there. You can just do a one-time donation. I appreciate that if you guys choose to do so. And if you do your daily shopping with a bunch of my affiliate links down below for ways to shop, the things I bought here, I'll have links for that. There'll be coupon codes down below for all the different filaments that I've used because I have coupons for most everything that I have here. So please check some of that stuff out. And if you guys just watch a video and you're all the way to here, you're awesome. I hope to see you next time. And until then, happy printing.